Yo guys, how's it going? This is Sugi Khan and thanks for joining me today on my 5k subscriber celebration video. And as promised, I will be answering the questions that were on the previous video. And of course, I will be giving some keys out for Steam and of course, a few Riot Point cards, which are hidden throughout the video pretty well. Some may will take time to find, but you know, just browse through the video and you will find them eventually. Let's talk about the questions. Um, some were really good. I'm gonna give you guys a pretty up lot because there was not really a lot of troll questions. Most of the questions were really good. Some made me think a bit more. And um, I like these Q and A's. So we're gonna do another one around 7,000 or 8,000 subscribers. We will see how long it will take me to get there. But you know, we will see. And I'm gonna start from the first questions that were answered in that type of chronological order and the first three questions were by Logan L and he's a guy who sometimes stops by the stream so shout outs for Logan for that and the first question him by him was when did you start playing League of Legends um, I don't really remember when I first tried the game this has to be in 2010 I played a Mumu back then and there was Cho'Gath and Cho'Gath was OP I didn't play the full game because I was an internet cafe. I can't really pinpoint the day when that happened, but I do know is I started playing the game in 2011 June, and this was when Oriana was released right after Wayne, and that was the time when I made my account and started playing like on a daily basis. Um, what is your favorite champion slash role? I don't really have favorites. I'm having sometimes I like playing this champion or that champion. Um, but most games probably have to be, at least on last season, was Jinx. Jinx is one of my favorite champions to play. You know, if you play too much, it gets a bit boring. But Jinx is my go to go champion, it's one of my best champions. Favorite role. Um, it has changed a lot throughout the years, but I can say my least favorite now is jungle, then has to come support. AD carry is nice, but you you always need a good support. I don't like playing with fucking blitzcranks all the time, so that's annoying. So it's not AD carry. Top lane has a pretty annoying champion pool right now, which I don't like, so it has to be mid lane right now. That is my favorite role that I prefer playing. And the third question was, what do you think of this new Dead Eye champion? Hmm. Well, we know it's an AD carry. And um, when Riot did AD carry reworks, they ruined Graves to the grave, pun intended. And well, Kakma, which was one of my favorites, became kind of shit. Two, Queen is more viable now. So I think two champions became like out of the meta. Or, I mean, they still play them, but I, I just think it's nice to have a new AD carry because they fucked up two of my favorite AD carries. And I think Ezreal is not viable by all means. I think he's kind of shit right now. And AD carries are kind of weak right now. So I'm hoping he will have some type of like a percentual damage build it on his kit. The next question is by Taib Topsicle. Will you remember Taib forever? Well, forever is a kind of like um, a relative word. And this question continues. When you hit 100,000 subscribers, I will ask you if you know me, how would you answer? Um... You know, I will say, oh, it's that guy from that video, if I remember you, but 100k is, that's a far away. That may not even be possible. I might not ever reach that. That's a really hard goal. Um, something really drastic would have to happen on the content that I would reach that high. But, you know, never stop believing. But yeah, I probably won't remember you. <laughs> you don't even have an avatar on YouTube. Your, your name is hard to remember. Come on, man. <laughs> okay. The next question is by Enibo Chugar or Chubar. I don't know how to pronounce that. What do you think of Trump? So there was a lot of um, questions about Trump in these comments. Um, some Each of them were kind of different. Um, I have watched few episodes of Apprentice. Um, and that's where my previous knowledge of Trump 
is about. So I knew him before he went for this presidential election. Um, funnily enough, well, I'm going to make a bit of a reference. Some people may know Last Shadow, um, a League of Legends streamer who also used to be coach of Gravity in NALCS. And he also used to be analyst for Super Hot Crew. And he's, uh, he used to be a sub for some of the Samsung teams also in Korea. He lives in Korea and, you know, he does these videos where he explains stuff. And in one of the videos he said, even if Donald Trump were... They, I'm going to paraphrase here, okay? Even if Trump would strip down of his identity and given a new name and a new face and he would start start from the bottom, he would be a success again because he's a successful man. And that quote couldn't be wrong. It couldn't be more wrong because a lot of people don't know that Trump, he actually went bankrupt. Multiple, I think he went bankrupt three times with his companies. He didn't start from the fucking bottom. His dad was a pretty much a millionaire. And there's a, the final, the good quote, the good meme. I'm a loan of a one million dollars from my father. That's what Trump says in a fucking, fucking interviews. A small loan of one million dollars. Small loan ate one million, mate. Holy, <laughs> oh my god. So, Trump is 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 kind of guy who you know is one of those guys who just rise of success of his father. His father started this big big enterprise of like owning condos and apartments and real estate business, pretty much. He's a huge real estate company, and that's where Trump got all of his money. And he managed to fuck up those companies. In, into the grave, uh, the bankrupt. I don't know if there was something suspicious. Maybe it was avoiding taxes or the monies are in Cayman Islands. I don't know. But what I do know is um, he's a bit of a racist. But, you know, he... But what I like about him is talks about some of the problems that are going on. But he's not a guy who is very intelligent. I don't think he would be a good representation of America. He could be. He he would be a good representation of an Ameri um, average American from uh, you know, who is a bit of an ignorant from maybe from the down south or something like that. But he's not a linguistic. I don't think he appreciates other cultures a lot. I don't think he would be a good representative outside America, and. Um, yeah, that's my... I will talk about Trump in other questions more. Um, the next question is by John Dross. What got you into gaming? Um, it probably was my dad. My first game that I was play, I played was... I don't remember which one is it. It has to be Warcraft 2. Or it has to be Minesweeper on a kindergarten PC. I wanted to. I, I kind of wonder how did they have a PC on a kindergarten at that time when I was young, but it has to be one of those two games. And you know, the rest is as follows. You know, I got PS One and Game Boy at, at, at like ninety nine, ninety or two thousand. So, you know, so I had a lot of places to play games, and you know, the rest is you know, um, buying new PCs and you know, staying in the gaming. Maddie the Cat asks, do you like tuna? Um, funny enough, I, I like tuna a lot. Um, maybe not uh, canned tuna. I like to put it on sometimes on bread. Um, a toasted bread. Usually it's best with that. Or I usually mix it with pasta. You put some tomato or pasta sauce and you put tuna and pasta and you mix it up. It's pretty good meal. It's it's cheap. Tuna is cheap. What I like about it is like you can get a can with under a euro or maybe one euro here. Okay. The next question is by Zed Master. Who is the first who, who is the worst champion at the moment? And what do you think about the new champion teaser teaser riot are releasing? Um, the worst champion has to be Tarek by all means. Tarek is super useless. Even though you can stack up some armor on him, he's mega useless because he's passive. His passive is so bad. It's so bad. There's nothing... There's You can't even go anymore that full AP Tarek build. He is super useless as support. He has a poor items that don't synergize with him. 
He's mega bad. He's really bad champion. There's no redeeming qualities about Tarek right now. Um, he has to be the worst champion in the game right now. He may not be the worst in terms of win ratio, but he is worst champion in the game. Uh, his Zen Master's second question was, will you do subscriber lol game or a ranked team? We used to, I used to play with some ranked games with some of my subscribers and we have a ranked team. Maybe we will do that more once they introduce the new ranked system. Um, the ranked teams are kind of like, you always have to have five people on it and there's the, there's, there's not unlimited slots on the teams and sometimes it's just hard to find the people to play with. Um, so it, we will see in the future. I like grass asks, what is your favorite streaming platform? Um, I'm kind of unsatisfied with everything. I don't like Twitch because there's this huge donation culture and those who have been on my streams, I don't take donations on. You don't have my PayPal on descriptions because I don't ask for charity. Um, I do wish people to just turn off ad block, but um, I just don't like Twitch and the Twitch chats are really like, there's no intelligent discussion there. It's just meme spamming. I don't really enjoy that. And um, Hitbox is all right, but their their management side has done some dumb shit. And YouTube gaming is kind of like the developers are either underpaid or they don't really take things seriously. I just have a huge off about them dealing with their platform. So I would say Hitbox is probably my favorite, but no, not nothing of these streaming platforms is right now perfect. His second question is, which skin is your favorite in League of Legends? Um, hard question. I do like my TPA Oriana skin a lot. And I like a lot of the TPA skins, actually. Um, yeah, except the Jax. No, wait, there wasn't a Jax. I like the Mundo and the Shen. Ezreal is kind of mad. And what was the fifth one? I don't, I don't remember what was the support skin. But I do like TPA Oriana. There are of course a lot of other skins that I like, but that's only one that comes into really my mind that I really still enjoy. Oh, Heartbringer Cassidy is pretty good too. I don't I don't really have like those super special skins that I really enjoy. But some yeah, I do of course like the Uter legendary skin because the normal Uter skin is really horrible. Next question by Philip Wallach. Well, hopefully I did pronunciation right he asks what do you like about league of legends i like it it's a global game i think is a as a content creator it's nice to make videos about games that has a lot of audience um and i was in this platform or this youtube thing like way before that most of the people came so i don't think myself as a poser or anything but mm, i don't i don't like the game as i used to like it because it just having gotten on my nerves you know four years of the same game or five years actually it's just <clears throat> it's just becoming a toll on a bit okay i need some water okay break over inferno riven asked do you have any siblings um i have three half brothers which are age of oh my god i think Mm, 17 13 and 10 I think are there so there's a bit of a significant age gap between us but they're still my brothers and they're pretty cool they're kind of like me kind of less edgy though and then there's a lot of questions by John Cleveland one of the guys who always steps by the stream and appreciate him as a good friend um, his first question is what do you think of Riot as a company? Um, Riot is one of those companies who says one thing and does does something else, totally contrary to that. Like, you know, I could pull many things, like the, EU, the Europe West compensation, that never happened. We never got our IP boost. We never got compensation for the server shit that happened on Europe West. No compensation to be seen. Um, I do, I do, uh, there's a lot of questionable things on the esports aspect where they, there was like a lot of drama back in the day when they asked some like 
teams if you're going to have a league of legends team you should drop a, your dota 2 team out and then there's stuff like saying to esl well we don't want you to run dota 2 tournaments along with league of legends i think there's a conflict of interest and then they talk about like oh we're here to help esports as a whole when that's totally like not true when they really try to like monopoly their game over everything else and i'd also don't like how this lcs system like they're pretty much telling like og and in riot in korea and everybody this is how you run your league please uh, apply our, our rules into this and they are just bit of pretty much a dictatorship for the most part um i don't like all their decisions but when it comes to like game play gameplay balance they have done a pretty good job from since season two right now the game is fucked up though but uh, until like that patch and of course they fucked the worlds because gangplank and mordekaiser was like permanent every game aside from those things balance has been pretty good and i do also like the art team and you know about the new champion though i'm something tells me that i'm not gonna like her his design too much but you know the designs have been a bit of a hit or a miss for me his second question is what rank is your main account um i think it's gold four or gold five i haven't played as much in preseason as i wanted to i'm still kind of learning what is good in the patch and what is not good his third question is will you ever able to play on na servers um now that the servers have been moved um might be playing some you know games there um we will see dark mc asked what server are you playing on i play on air west mainly but i sometimes go play on nordic east and sometimes i play in russia um, another question by john cleveland are you still pursuing taoism um yes i am very interested in taoism as a religion um i won't be doing a summary what is taoism for people but it's a religion without a god and it's a chinese religion and it's not really based on a lot of magical stuff it's more like a way of living type of a thing the problem is my country doesn't have any type of a taoism association so i can't register as a taoist in my country which is very shocking to me i figured out this yesterday and if i'm looking to move out from the country i definitely want to move a country which would have a taoism uh, taoism as a as a like uh, uh, option dark mc second question how much money did you spend on low um i tried to find from paypal and from what was it from my bank accounts like how much i've actually wasted on well not wasted or sp spend is the right word um the number has to be somewhere around 400 to 500 dollars of e or euros i think that would be very precise number thanks to mk lol and owning every champion in the game i won't be using any more as much as money as i used to might buy some icons to support my teams because portion of that money goes to the teams um but for me i don't want to spend money on a game which can get me banned any day because some peep x amount of people reported me and i don't have any type of a defense on my side where i can like you know object to accusations or i don't get my money back you know when my account gets closed my one of my accounts got closed and i lost everything i didn't get those champions back or that money back that was spent on that account so for that reason i don't want to spend money on league of legends because i don't have any guarantees of my money uh getting back to me or transferred to another account um another question by john he has a lot of questions by the way are you still going to move still going to move south of towards germany um i do intend to move out from this country finland is is there's a lot of like shocking stuff about it like forced army service 
I didn't have to serve, thank God. But if my children would have to, I would have a big problem with that. I don't think my children should be going to, I don't think anything, anybody should be forced to go there. It's, it's against like, you know, because the women are not forced to go anywhere on like, um, as a, like an, like, um, a medic or anything, they don't have to go that. And that's, that's against like equal rights. That's, I don't think I, just because I'm a man, I should be going to learn how to play with guns and grenades and explosives and shit. That's not something that anybody should be forced to go through. I think that's a violation of personal freedom. And freedom is something that this country desperately needs. So to really summarize, I'm really kind of interested in moving out to Germany is a nice place. Um, Spain would be interesting, but you need to learn a bit of language because in those countries you can't survive with English. So there would have to be some type of process of me learning the language before I could fully move. But, um, you know, this place is getting pretty boring. I want to be more involved going to events around Europe and I want to be involved in esports more and content creation. And I, if you want to be on those circles, I think it would be much beneficial to live in a country which has more of that presence, whatever it be, UK, Germany, Norway, Sweden, or France, etc. Another question by John Cleveland. Do you think Russia is in his own verge of war? Um, I think it's just now, right now, it's everything that happens with North Korea and all these countries is they're just showing their dicks, but they're not really like peeing you know so everybody has those fucking nuclear weapons or something i don't think they ever will be getting used i don't think russia will go in war with like america because europe will be involved in finland people still think like we have to serve in the army because russia may attack we would get dumpstered by russia in like first 20 days but it's there's a lot of like people i mean vladimir is a bit of a wild card as a president so you never know what's going to happen, but um, I don't believe that's going to happen. I think there might be some few small shit, but not, not nothing really on a grand scale going to happen. There are probably going to be some conflict in Syria where, you know, Russia is on their side, America is on our side, and, you know, some Middle East shit. Um, another question by John Cleveland. What is the best political model democratic dictatorship communism etc um as we've seen as america invaded to middle east iraq and libya got totally fucked once their dictators gaddafi and saddam hussein were removed so those places are now in a worse situation as they were of course gaddafi and you know, Saddam probably like killed random people and there was some type of like controversial, if somebody spoke against them, they probably got hanged and shit. And then there was a thing in Somalia too, where, you know, you had some, this was in 90s, Somalia had a, a warlord there and there's opposition, those guys would be founding, hanged <laughs> or like butchered their heads off in the street the next day on a market square. So, in a sense, dictatorships do work. They do work in some type of um, model, but it's really dependent on the country. I think maybe Afghanistan would be much better on dictatorship. Someone who... Democratic models don't work everywhere. That's, that's a fact. I think in democratic societies, there's too much like... What we use, use the term we use in esports is shot calling. I think that's very important is like... Um, it, you need to make hard decisions in democratic countries. You have to go through the hoops, the process. You have to go through the government officials and like many different loops and hoops to get things done. It's slow. It's not Im immediate in effect and they get pushed and then there's like opposition for that. And because of that, democratic model is not very good always when you really need those decisions however i think democratic models or dictatorships work really well on in certain countries that are a bit smaller but 
the problem that America is facing right now is, is I think there's too much diversion in people's opinions. You have left and right and you have liberals and God knows what else. So in future, I would like to see countries like China, Russia and USA let certain states and play, and parts of the country become independent. I think that would be, in terms of balancing the world powers, that would be a better thing. And there's too much conflict. And when you have any type of big country like China, China has like 30 different ethnicities and they will have a lot of like laws and problems that are really hard to enforce when there's different ethnicities and cultures and religions in the same country. And people are not going to agree on every point. So there has to be, you know, some, some, something has to be done about that situation. But I don't think communism is a really good model. Um, there's some, there could be a better version out of it, but people often talk about rich get richer, poor get poorer, and the middle class is kind of evaporating. I think those statements are totally clear and I've seen it happening. But um, it's 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 a totally different topic. Uh, his next question by John again: Are you gonna be streaming at some point? Yeah, when I'm starting to feel a bit better, and um, I got more inspiration to stream. I kind of want to work on videos right now. His last question is: Who is the most mechanically difficult champion? The way. Um, well, that's a very hard question to really pull. I mean, Heimerdinger, in a sense, is kind of hard because you have a lot of small tips and tricks that go into playing him. Of course, you have a lot of people would say Lee Sin and Italy. There's a lot of like those that require a lot of... Com well, I think Jace is also hard. I think... Oh, actually, I'm going to say like Kale. Not maybe mechanically. I mean, Kale is kind of like you have to really know the cooldowns and durations of your spell really well because once you go in you can't really go out so he's like kind of one dimensional champion and i think he that's a champion that i always kind of f found hard to play um the next question is by jesper walling what is your main lane and champion and where you're from um I'm from finland as i discussed main champion is pretty much jinx Main lane has to be kind of mid lane now. Another question by Jasper Wallin. Is there any way we subscribers can meet you in real life? Do you go do fan meetups or comic cons? I mean, I've been in Gamescom and, you know, other like type of gaming events. But I don't, uh, meetups are kind of cringy. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. And I don't really like to show my face, not that I'm ugly or beautiful or anything I just kind of want to keep my privacy um, I you know can do like games while I'm streaming and stuff like that but other than that I'm not really interested and I don't think I have that big of a fan base right now to make that interesting and just for a third question is can you make a video about how about to get to a successful youtuber um, there's a lot of things that go play into this, like you have to, you know, you need to like optimize your channel really well. You need, un need to understand like descriptions and tags and titles and about like how search engines results work in YouTube. You need to make unique content and it has to be pretty good quality these days too. You can't get away with filming stuff with a potato. Um, in some areas it's harder to preach out like gaming is very like populated so it's really hard to break through but if you have a lot of unique things um i think you can become really successful but i maybe make another separate video about that later on um arturo pendragon asks why did you name yourself sugi khan well um if somebody has watched my sugi tv channel um i watched recently well a year ago the uh, marco pulo series a netflix show 
which is about Mongols. And um, I got really fixated after that about reading about Mongol history. I watched the Don Carlin's um, Hardcore History of the Mongols, Wrath of the Mongols series. And I, I'm a really big fan of Chinggis Khan, one of my people that I really look up to. So I just decided to change the name um, because of that. Alex Serban asks, which are your New Year resolutions? Um, I don't really do those. Um, probably is maybe lose some weight, I guess, and eat more healthy. Troller Parrot, what do you think about Mormons and Mormonism as a religion in general? Well, you know, Mormons are pretty like, okay, I'm gonna check out this definition of Mormons. Um, yeah, for the most part, like, isn't this the kind of, isn't this the religion where you could have multiple wives? Is, uh, or am I mixing up? Um, I think they're like what I've heard and listened to, you know, they're not a prominent religion, you know, in Europe, so I have a limited access, but they seem to be one of the, like, the better Christian type of things. There's so many sub, there's so many sub, um, you know, like, um, religions under, like, Christianity, but I'm a Tao guy. I think the Chinese religions are the best because um, there's a lot of like rationale into them. The Abrahamic religions, aka Ju uh, Jewish, um, no, the Jews, the Islam and the Christians, um, they are kind of, there's a lot of like corruption and problems into them. And like, um, I, didn't, I think a lot of the people say religions are the source of the, the world's problems. I do think it's the Abrahamic religions, the other religions are pretty calm and tame. They don't really do a lot of bad shit most of the time. Like Buddhists, they're pretty chill guys. They don't do fucking these crazy extremist shit. So in that sense, I think Mormons is definitely on the better end of the Abrahamic religions. But I'm still not really like, I wouldn't convert. But I think they're pretty okay. Uh, Ronnie all asked, what do you think about Asian teams in League of Legends and do you think they will become even even more dominant during 2016 like Thorne said? Um, even though EU made it to semi-finals, I still think, I still think, even though Origin won Flash Wolves, I don't think Origin would have won AHQ and I still believe AHQ would have won Fanatic. So in my opinion, the top four teams at Worlds or top three at Worlds, top three teams at Worlds were SKT, Ku Tigers, and AHQ, and probably KT. And in my honest opinion, I do think LMS is a stronger region right now than Europe. And in recent IEM, China outperformed um, EU, so you could say um, China is getting better. Um, I do believe the Chinese are just better. It's just, it's just, it's a gene thing. That's what I believe. It's a gene thing. You know, it's like black people are really good at basketball because they're more muscular. But if you put them to like play games or like play chess, we would probably have less results. And that's because, and that's not necessarily I'm saying like the black people just historically have lower IQs. And some people say, no, it's because they're poverty, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I'm a kind of like, I believe in that racial studies. So Asians are just better than white people and black people and Hispanic people at games because they're, they have high IQs and they're fucking smart about games. And of course they put more hours. They're not, they're less lazy in that sense. And I also say that, um, I do believe very strongly that Japan is going to be very, very strong region once they get their shit together. But the problem is the Japanese people don't care about PC games as much and it will they, they don't even have the servers yet but the the, the team the donation FM was pretty strong team at the wild card and they just had a one bad mistake on one game which kind of killed their chance to go to the world and I do think the Japanese could be the number one region even but they're so behind in terms of like having their own infrastructure they have their own league, but they don't have the player base. They don't have the, the pool of players. 
And same kind of problem with LMS regions like Hong Kong um, and Singapore and Taiwan. They just have less people in those countries compared to Korea and China in terms of population. And they just have lower player pools. But Japan could be a serious threat in upcoming years. But since Riot is eliminating a lot of the com international competition, maybe those regions will stay shit forever. But um, it would be interesting to see. But I agree with Thorin. I don't believe what Thorin says that Koreans are always going to be the better. Some Asian team is going to be best always. Um, I think the Japanese would could be Koreans easily if they just... Uh, would be invested on these things uh, and they're really good at fighting games already they have a few scenes there but as I said you know they're not maybe as competitive people maybe in Japan they need to bring that culture there in order they in order that they will become big Hawks Mass asks if Donald Trump became president what do you think the world would come to and we kind of discussed this already a bit uh, I don't think he's a super bad choice but out of the republics i would go with ben carson maybe he's more logical trump may have some financial things he's gonna pull off once he gets the presidency as i mentioned before he's not maybe the best representative representative outside the country and he's not a president of all the people in america i don't know if he's gonna build the wall though i think that would be legally the right thing to do to build a wall though because it's illegal to have immigrants and who are going to gain from having immigrants from Mexico coming in is the people who can hire them with minimum wage below minimum wage so there's a lot of sides to that Alexander Soli asks what youtubers do you watch and who got you into YouTube um, I don't there's not necessarily a one person who got me into I just I think at some point I was like I can make videos too um, I watch a lot of youtubers like a lot of uh, philosophical ones such as like the Rubin report Joe Rogan the God sad um, and like I watch Thorin Richard Lewis about esports stuff and a lot of those thought provoking. I don't really watch a lot of gamers, but I do like some comedy stuff like um, the French guy who's Gerard. What's I don't remember his first name. Um, and um, of course, Filthy Frank is one of my favorites too. Et Goddess asks Shrek one, two, or three. Uh, I would have to say Shrek one. I haven't. I don't remember if I've seen the third movie. Random um, YouTube name asks, what your favorite country you ever visited? This is a hard one. Because I was a kid, I used to visit America. I probably would like America a lot. Um, but I don't have you know memories about that, so I can't say America. Um, could be, could be, um, Germany is probably one of my favorites that I visited in a while. I didn't like Paris and Belgium and Estonia and... Uh, yeah, they, I didn't really have like super negative feelings about any country except Egypt. The, the Middle East shit is not working for me. Um, but yeah, I would say Germany. Calvin Lin asks, your PC specs. I'm going to list them down in the description. What do you think is the future of MOBAs? Um, I think there's going to be more like hybrid games and people might be trying some 3D stuff more with the Paragon. Um... Do League and Dota are kind of stagnating in terms of growth now, but knowing the player bases, they kind of keep playing the game. Um, it just you need a really good developers making really good games right now. I think too much amateur developers have tried to enter the space and didn't know what the fuck to do. Three, the third question is future of Paladins. I think Paladins, since you know, as I said, it's one of those hybrid games. It's going to do well. I think it's going to be bigger than Smite. They need to polish the game just. Fourth question. Future games you're going to play. Um, well, Paragon might be one game. And more Paladins, of course. Um, games that I'm excited. There's a lot of indie games that are coming out that I want to play. 
Um, there's the new Deus Ex game and the new Hitman game. Those I'm really excited to play. Those are fun games to play. Michelangelo asks, Michelangelo1 asks, YouTube inspiration. Um, there has been a few videos that inspired me, but um, I always kind of, maybe when I get more money, I'm always kind of interested maybe start maybe traveling around and filming some type of documentary series. So in that terms of sense, like the Vice channel and their documentaries have kind of inspired me to do that sort of stuff. But I'm, I, I like to think, even though my content is not super unique, I'm not really like purposely trying to be somebody or like trying to like, I don't think, I think I'm kind of original in that sense. I'm not trying to be anybody. I just trying to do my thing. But I do, I love video game donkey. That's something I forgot to mention. And five questions left. Uh, whoa, this is a long video. Misha Mirochichenko, what is your favorite color? Um, I just, like I said, I'm jack of all trades. I don't really have favorite colors, but I don't like green. So I do like black and white, orange, purple, even pink. But colors I don't really like is maybe maybe green. Bright green is something that I find disgusting. And I never considered yellow as my color either. Orange is also one of my favorite colors. But, you know, I don't really have a formulated super hardcore opinion about that. And other question is, when is the MOBAs of 2016 video coming out? Um, this month, hopefully. Um, yeah. I plan to do it this month. What do you think about Donald Trump? Well, we talk about Trump a lot already. I don't think I think everything has been said. You know, it's not impossible that he could be a president. Um, you know, Americans are crazy. It just will show you. This is a good. This is a good test for Americans to test. Like, are they really? Will they do the smart decision? I would go for probably. None of the candidates are super good. The problem is, in Finland, for instance. You have six major parties and ten reasonably major parties, which all have kind of power. But in America, you've only got two, which is kind of like corrupted system because there's not really a third party that's any significant at all. I heard about the Tea Party, but I think they're crazy and they don't have any type of a solid foundation or following. Um, and um, so I, I would say probably Ben Card. Ben, Car ben Carson out of Republics and Bernie Sanders out of Democrats are the best choices right now. And Paul Rand is also pretty good. Actually, Paul Rand might be the best. He's He got some really smart shit, but he got some few stuff that I can't agree with, though. Um, I haven't just watched too much of the other candidates too much, so I could give, like, a good opinions. Jipasco TV, do you think my channel has potential... Um, as I told you in Reddit, you know, I think you gotta got good side, good tech channel stuff. Um, definitely, you keep going at it, make more videos, and you could be big someday. And you know, if you join my YouTube network, maybe you can, I can help you with that. And Calvin Lin's final question: Ever gonna quit law? Most definitely gonna quit law. Um, maybe it's that because of time constraints, or maybe there's gonna be a better game than League of Legends, which totally could be possible i might i could see myself playing some games like overwatch more in the future um you never know and second final question by daryl sebastian kozanga jr my friend dsg which came first the chicken or the egg i actually believe it's the egg because i believe that when the evolution thing happens so you know there was like a like a some type of video where i saw or picture where some chicken had teeth like a raptor or t-rex kind of thing so once they like evolve from the dinosaurs you know so some point you know the chicken like what i'm trying to say the chicken the egg had to come first because the I'd, it's hard to see because we never haven't seen how evolution really works you don't see like some like yeah, so it had to be the chicken. The, uh, sorry, it had to be the egg first. 
His second question is, when will you create Suki Pranks channel? Never. <laughs> I think the pranks are fucking lame. Never gonna happen. Game Bomb. What do you think about Ken Show Network? Should I join them? Very funny question to ask somebody who owns the network, but yeah, you definitely should join. Um, uh, we had a good re track record. Not a lot of people have been dissatisfied with our service. Uh, over 95% of the people have stayed with the network. And yeah, that is the, for the video. My throat almost died while making this over 45 minutes but all the questions were answered hopefully you find all the keys hidden on the video and um, you know I'm gonna just wrap it up here check out my other channels as well and exciting 2016 for you guys and there's gonna be cool things happening and um, a lot of cool content coming up too cheers Riddle number one. King of beasts, they call me. A magical authority, a guardian, and a savior of my land. Tame as I may not be, still gentle and loving and powerful, yet I am. Turkish, my name is. Who am I? Riddle number two. Some of us can only be seen in a certain light. Some of us are temporary. Some of us are permanent. Some people may view us as symbols. With pain, we come and go. What are we? Riddle number three. This toy brings me such joy up and down it goes sometimes it sleeps sometimes it's tangled what am i <laughs>